What's up, everybody? It's a boy meme here for breakfast. What I have. I, I do that a lot. I say for breakfast and I like do something weird with my face. I'm sorry, guys. Um, for breakfast, I had, I had stuffed peppers, um, like leftover stuffed peppers, and that was pretty good. That was called, yeah, stuff, stuffed peppers. That's weird. That's a weird name. Um, and then I picked up the apples. Oh, I need to put the bins away. Um, I cleaned the sink. Um, but most of today, I worked on my essay on Hannah Arendt's society and culture. And bang, here it is. Um, so the thing that I did was I sort of just went through here and I sort of just described each link that I had previously made. If you look at my tr graph, which I feel like I shouldn't be obsessing over my graph like this, but it's sort of floating around in its own thing. But it's cool because it's all sort of separated by... Um, by the, the group, right? So it would it would all be gray, but since it's um, stopped by the group, you know, we're, we're good here. Um, but anyway, it should probably just be Path English 101. Um, yeah, so here's my essay. Um, it's basically just supposed to be about this paragraph, and he said it can be you know, no more than four pages, but if you feel like you've done two pages and you feel like you're done, then that's fine. Uh, I didn't write this essay in Obsidian, I actually wrote it in Google Docs. Yeah. Yes. Um, but, you know, uh, I just copy pasted it into Obsidian so then I could hook to it and stuff, like link to it. Um, yeah, so which I know you're not supposed to do. I know you're supposed to like do stuff as it, as it goes and you know, I would connect stuff, but like mm, earnestly, honestly, like, I, I don't know. I think this specific case, it's fine. Uh, so yeah, I'm, I'm gonna read out my, my thing. Before the subject paragraph, the groundwork of the three types of time has been set. And this groundwork is leftover time, leisure time, and vacant time. Leisure time is when you are liberated from all cares and activities and don't have to think about labor. So like an example of that would be like, if it's, um, like if you have a, if, if it's the weekend, right, you're still thinking about labor on Sunday because the next day is work. Um, so in an example where you're not working, you are liberated from all cares and activities and therefore have leisure time. Leftover time is the negative space left behind after labor and sleep have received their due. However, vacant time is the particular definition of that space, rather than defining it through lack of labor and sleep. So this is sort of, I, this is the last thing I wrote in this essay because I sort of left it for later because I couldn't really figure out how to describe it. Um, and if I go into here, it shows the three different types of time. Um, but what I mean is that l leftover time, its description is like the definition of leftover time is when you're not sleeping and when you're not working. That third thing is leftover time. But what that third thing is called is called vacant time. So leftover time is defined by it not being work and not being sleep. But vacant time is like it, the particular definition of that negative space created by labor and sleep, right? Um, so that's sort of what I mean. I don't know if that's a great, it's just the first draft. So I, you know, we'll see. Um, the first sentence in the paragraph, I don't need to say in the paragraph because, of course, uh, the first sentence begins with the term modern conditions. The term modern is referring to the individual described on page 279, someone who tries to assert themselves onto society, which is the good society also spoken about on page 279. Conditions in the term modern conditions is what happens to culture under the different conditions of society and mass society. Since the burden of physically exhausting labor has been lifted from the modern man, this vacant time proceeds to grow, taking the form of a hiatus between labor and sleep. And sort of here I'm describing like the, the vacant time growing and taking the form of a hiatus, which is like, she describes a hiatus here. Yeah. Yeah, this hiatus is constantly growing. So that's sort of what I'm describing in that, in that essay, in that paragraph. This hiatus of vacant time between labor and sleep forms the life process. And the life process is this. Vacant time between sleep and work, there's vacant time, and that's filled by entertainment. And that's the life process. Um, entertainment offered by, oh, 
The hiatus of vacant time between labor and sleep forms the life process, where the modern man awakes from his slumber and proceeds to work, awakes from his slumber. I wanted to say something silly, and I think that's probably the silliest thing in this essay. Awakes, awakes from slumber. What are you talking about? <laughs> um, where, where the modern man awakes from slumber, proceeds to work, and happens to have the rest of his day occupied with vacant time. Um, the nature of this vacant time, as said in the first sentence, um, is to be wild away by entertainment. Entertainment is a vital in the life process. It's a commodity to be consumed by food, and entertainment must be produced anew and offered anew, like food, to maintain the life process. Uh, so it's like how, you know, food spoils, right, and you've got to make new food and so it can be consumed in time, and uh, it's like how you've got to make new entertainment so that entertainment can be consumed in time. So just like food, um, it must be produced anew and offered anew to maintain the life process. Entertainment offered by the entertainment industry are not cultural objects. A cultural object is something that is able to withstand the life process necessitated by mass society. So life process, this is sort of inherent to mass society. Yeah, like this process is necessitated on mass society. Uh, mass society, on the contrary, wants not culture but entertainment, and the wares offered by the entertainment industry are indeed consumed by society just as any other consumer goods. And so that sort of necessitates this life process, right? But yeah. Um, a cultural object is something that's able to withstand the life process necessitated by a mass society. After the object's survival, it becomes a permanent appurtenance um, of the world. And an appurtenance is just like an attachment. It's like an, uh, like an accessory object, sort of. Um, becomes a permanent appurtenance of the world. Um, yeah. Objects for entertainment are not things, as they haven't withstood the life process, and they never will withstand the life process, because they were never made to be consumed by mass society via the life process. So. Um, things for entertainment that are made for the life process, made for mass society, cannot become things. Like, they can't become cultural objects because they were made to be part of that mass society. They were made to be consumed. So, um, by the time they would have any time to, like, carve out, uh, any, any cultural significance, um, it's already been consumed by society. So it's, it's sort of impossible to build that sort of, sort of cultural significance. Consider entertainment objects consumed by mass society in opposition to cultural objects in society, also known as good society. Before the masses of the population were incorporated into society and became mass society, society only contained the few who would be considered worthy enough of who would be considered worthy of societal consideration. This society interacted with cultural objects by prescribing social value onto them and trading cultural objects around like a currency to buy a higher position in society than was than what was destined for them. This makes the cultural objects lose their originality as they're worn down like an old coin, which is a particularly apt comparison considering the stem of these objects lost originality is from being traded around like currency. I don't know if this apt comparison thing is like safe to be in here. The whole thing with the essay is that you're not really supposed to interpret and say what a rent means. You're just sort of talking about the concepts objectively, right? Because um, like the, the, the complete truth is in this paragraph this is what she means and she wrote down what she means so there's no room for interpretation so if you're interpreting something you're sort of doing something wrong and i feel like just saying that it's an apt comparison i feel like maybe i'm not doing something wrong there and i feel like maybe that's not silly um because um i'm not really doing any interpreting i'm just being like oh worn down like an old coin that makes sense because like an old coin these artworks were traded around like currency so i feel, feel like i'm just hammering the point home that a rent made but you know, that's the essay. It'll probably be longer, my, my next draft, but yeah, it's cool. Shout out Obsidian. My essay should show up. Oh, yeah, there you go. All right, yeah. Um, and then for dinner, we had chili cheese dogs, and that was pretty good. Um, yeah, all right, see you too.